This lecture is one of many in my complete rigging course for Moho and Anime Studio users. Enjoy! Hi, this is McCoy Buck with WatchMeWork.com, and in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to create a body turn like the one that you see here. So this character, as we have learned, is made up of images, and this is a smart warp. So what we want to do is we want to use this body that was already created. This is the original character created by Victor Paredes, and we want to make a reference of this angle right here. So real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of the layers and just take out all of the other layers besides the body, because that's what I want to reference. And then I'm going to hit Control R on my keyboard. You can zoom this in a little bit bigger so you have a bigger reference and then save it as a PNG. Then once you have done that, I'm going to go ahead and just hide that because I already have my reference. You're going to import your reference. So your body turn PNG like you see here. So we want to use a reference. So just go to your add new layer and then import your image and then select wherever you had saved that image. So now that you have your reference, let's go ahead and let's go to the main character crocodile that we want to use. I don't want to use the um, original one. I want to use the one we've been working on. So I'm going to bring that up. So I'm going to shrink this down, make sure I am on frame zero. So I'm not creating any keyframes on frame one or anything like that. And zoom it in just a little bit like that. So I'm also going to be focusing on just the body. So same thing, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna take out all of my layers besides the body layer. All right, there we go. And I'm just going to bring that up, zoom that in just a little bit bigger. And that's good like that. And then I'm gonna go back to my image layer and also zoom that in and just have these references side by side. Now, one of the tricks that I've found that's pretty handy, you can do this or not, is actually you can take and you can do a side-by-side -side split view. So if you wanted to have just your window showing this here and then have your reference in the other window instead of having them side-by-side, -side, you can also do that as well. And then you can also move your window space as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna have mine just like that, side-by-side. -side. I'm gonna go down to my body layer and right below that, I'm going to create my vector layer because that's where I'm going to begin my mesh. I was already working on one right there, so I'll just delete that. And I'm going to go to create new vector. So now I have my vector. I'm going to call this body mesh. And then just like what we did before, I'm going to add points. So I'll speed this video up. All right. So that is done. I have found that it's really good to use the least amount of points as possible for your outer edges. When we were doing our arms and stuff, we were wanting to do a bunch of points and for the hands, that's because that's where the bend area was happening. However, all the detail and all the bending is gonna be happening inside of this body. As you can see there, we want to move this whole body or this whole torso layer to the side to look like this. So for your outer side right there, that's a pretty good number of points. Um, I'm actually gonna add two points right here because I want to create some control points for this curve right here in this area. I know I also want to add another point right about here. So I'm gonna add actually about two more there and that should be good. And the only reason why I'm saying, okay, I need to add these additional points is because I've already put this together. And what you're gonna find a lot with smart warps and stuff like that is it's a lot of trial and error. So you're going to be doing a lot of trial and error testing as you're putting this together. However, I'm going to show you a really cool way that you can actually edit on the fly as well. It takes a little bit more time, but the, uh, the step that you want to keep in mind is to have equilateral triangles. And sometimes you have a whole bunch of different polygonal shapes and isosceles triangles and all this weird stuff. And it makes the whole mesh warp uh, not very easy to move around. So we're gonna focus on just that alone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look right here in this body, in this particular image, you can see where the details are that I need to be moving. So one key thing that you wanna know about Smart Warp is wherever you place your line and your point, this is where that triangle piece is gonna be. And this is technically what's gonna be moving. I actually want to lay my points exactly on the details. So if I was actually creating this tie right here and I have my point out here, it's going to be moving the imagery of all of this right here and all of this right here because it's going to be creating two separate triangles connecting to that one point. However, if I have my point 
directly on the detail, I won't have to worry about dragging any other parts because it'll create those triangles pretty well for me. So I'll explain what's going on as what I was talking about right there, because it might be a little bit confusing if you're just watching this for the first time. So I'm going to draw out all these triangles. And one important thing that I'm going to do is not connect the triangles. So I'm going to speed this video up so you can watch what I'm doing, but don't have to watch the whole process. All right, now that looks pretty good there. The other thing that I want to mention is you want to make sure that your curves are exactly straight so you have absolutely no curvature. And something that I'm finding with this update of Moho Pro 12.2, the new feature for show Bezier handles, they kind of get in the way. Sometimes the Bezier handle gets grabbed as you're making these points and all sorts of weird stuff. So it starts to create lines that aren't curved, that aren't perfectly straight. So what I'm going to do to ensure that I have perfectly straight lines is I'm going to hit control A on my keyboard. Right now I'm on my transform points tool, just selecting all of those points. However, you can hit C on the keyboard and hit control A and it'll do the exact same thing. And as you can see there, I have a curvature somewhere of 0 0.0087. So there's still something somewhere in there, even though I had my straight corners on, there's still something in there that's not perfectly straight. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all those points, go here to this icon right here where it says peak and then click it. And that's gonna set everything to a perfectly straight line. All right, and that's all we're gonna cover for this lecture. Again, I just wanna make sure as I'm laying down these points that I'm pretty much right on the details that I wanna be moving. Especially this part right here, you can see that I created the lines exactly right here. That is gonna be very handy when I start moving everything around. And you'll see more of what I'm talking about. But in the next lecture, I'm gonna cover on how I'm going to connect the body mesh to the body and start creating triangles. So I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If this video helped you, be sure and like it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to write them in the comments. And subscribe for more awesome videos just like this. I'll see you later.